It's your boy, your dig, four eyes, two G's. And before we get into the video for today, guys, please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow your boy in all social medias for more. But on to today's topic. And today we're here to talk about Brockhampton. And Brockhampton is the collective, or boy band as they refer to themselves, that has risen to prominence over the last year or so in the hip hop scene. Their rabid fan base makes them inescapable on the internet. And in today's video, I wanted to discuss their journey to this point and kind of document key moments that have played into their success. Now, just to be clear, I'm not going to be starting from the very beginning, nor will I be covering absolutely everything, but I'm going to try to focus on and add context to key points. And let's start at the formation of Brockhampton. Brockhampton was basically a reimagining of another collective titled Alive Since Forever, where they switched up the name and added a few new members. This was sometime around late 2014, and at this time it's important to mention that this was still very early days for the group. Not even Kevin had really attained much success as a solo artist like that yet, so they were still relatively small. And throughout 2015, they would release various singles. As well as this, they would win a competition ran by V Files that landed them a video for Dirt that was released and executed by the label Fool's Gold. This was quite a big break for the group at that time, and with the track premiering on Beats One Radio and attaining some decent media coverage, it would help to spread their name. And moving into 2016, they would release their first project under Brockhampton titled All American Trash in March. And at this time, stylistically, the group was not quite there yet, and neither was their fan base. However, moving along into 2017 and building up to saturation, it's important to mention the role that Kevin Abstract played in the group's popularity. If you guys are unaware, Kevin Abstract, prior to committing to Brockhampton completely, had a pretty poppin' solo career as an alt hip hop, alt RB fusion type act, and his 2016 project, All American Boy friend actually received quite a bit of attention on the internet and helped him build a fan base of his own. So as Brockhampton was starting to gain their footing as a group, Kevin played a huge role in forming that initial fan base for them, as a lot of his internet popularity would rub off on the group. And this brings us to the first Saturation, which was released in June, a project that is still highly regarded by fans and one that altered the trajectory of the group completely. And there are multiple factors at play here that led to the success of this project, so I'm going to go through them one by one. Number one was the Viceland show. Titled American Boyfriend, it documented the journey of Kevin Abstract and Brockhampton, giving insights into Kevin's career and detailing the makings of videos and whatnot. However, what was really important was the strategic timing of the show. The show kicked off the day before Saturation was released, which helped to put more eyes onto the group, as people would watch the show, want to check out their music, and what do they know, the group had just released a brand new project. Secondly was the beauty of multiple internet cosigns. Let's first mention the hip hop head subreddit, because even prior to saturation, hip hop heads really embraced Brockhampton and were doing a lot to push their music. The singles they released leading up to saturation were given huge praise on the subreddit, and they helped to introduce many people to the group. And next was the role of popular internet figures. First of all, people like Enya, who runs a YouTube channel with over 80k subs, and Drew Phillips, who has a channel with over 100 100k subs were friends of the collective and used their platforms to interact with members of the group, co-sign their music, and overall just expose Brockhampton to their audience. And next of course this brings us to the needle drop, Mr. Anthony Fantano himself. It's pretty widely known how much the emphatic review he gave for Saturation 1 did for the group. I can vividly remember multiple of my friends hitting me up about Brockhampton after seeing his review, and everywhere you go people cite Anthony as the one who put them onto the the group, and it can't be understated how much he did for them. It didn't only make people listen to the music, but it caused a ripple effect of discussion about the group on the internet. Even more so than before, they became way more popping on hip hop hubs like Kanye Tither and the Hip Hop Head subreddit, and this elevated discussion pushed their names and music further and further. It was very much a case of saturation as a really great project blowing Brockhampton up thanks to the internet embracing them, rather than them exploding due to one big single or something like that. And once the internet latched onto Saturation 1, we saw the Brockhampton cult-like fanbase starting to form. On places like Twitter and their own subreddit, we saw people identify with the group in similar ways to how people identified with Odd Future back in the day. Having such distinctive personalities within the group allowed people to gravitate towards their favourite. This in tandem with the variety of content they flooded the internet with created an intimate relationship with their fans. It wasn't just the on 
to see a message in, in their music that people loved. It was the Viceland show, it was the documentary, it was the in-house creative merch and visual direction. As a collective, they were so varied, and through branching out in so many different avenues, it created a community for fans to become a part of. Not only this, however, the image, the messaging, and the music that they were bringing was so refreshing to the SoundCloud-dominated era of hip-hop that ran 2017 that made them stand out and be able to create a niche for themselves. So now that saturation had blew up, the next logical step for the group was to start working on the next project, and they didn't let up at all. Just two months after the original came number two in August, and the project was released to pretty much universal acclaim from fans and critics alike, and it's a pretty risky move to release another project so fast. But because the sound and image they were bringing was still interesting and unique, and the fact that they delivered on the project itself lent them that leeway to be able to drop so soon, and with the warm reception of the album it kept their name everywhere. However, the group would make fans wait a little longer for their next project, but before the end of the year came Saturation 3, and the key to this project's success was a slightly different sonic direction they went in. One complaint that people had about Saturation 2 was its similarity to the first, and I feel like if they did that again with number 3, they would have suffered at the hands of the same sound that made them popular. But the slight experimentation on Saturation 3 made for a refreshing take on their formula. So Saturation 3 was yet another successful project for the group, as it received universal acclaim yet again, and not to mention it performed pretty well commercially, with the album selling 36k first week, which may not necessarily sound that impressive, but when you consider that they have yet to have a song chart on the Billboard Hot 100, or have any sort of real mainstream success, that number is very, very impressive, and certified their fan base as one that is tangible and willing to support them further than just Twitter. And pushing forward into 2018, in March, it would be revealed that the group had signed to RCA for a deal that was reportedly worth $15 million. We've yet to see how much this deal will impact Brockhampton in any sort of tangible way, but I'm hoping as a result of this deal, we will see them become more prevalent in that mainstream eye, as I think some of their biggest songs have had potential to pop off in the mainstream. Then, just two months after, Brockhampton would announce the departure of beloved member Amir Van due to sexual misconduct, a controversial decision that sent the internet into a frenzy, and in a sense kind of put Brockhampton in a compromising position, as fans not only questioned whether Amir deserved this, but also he was looked at as a standout member of the group and a staple of their music, so naturally it raised concerns about how this would affect their music moving forward. Then, after several name changes, it would be announced that their next project would be called Iridescence, and being the first project post Amir's departure, there was a lot of pressure on Brockhampton to deliver, as some people would become skeptical that they couldn't deliver the same quality of music without his presence. Iridescence was released on the 21st of September, and at the time of recording this has just come out, so at this point it's unclear how the album has been received and what role it will play in the grander narrative for Brockhampton. But for now, that pretty much brings us up to date for the roller coaster that has been Brockhampton over the last couple years. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to let me know what you thought about their most recent project in the comments below. Also, please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow your boy on all social media medias for more.